Just when you thought the Oakland A's relocation saga could not get any more farcical, any more preposterous than it already has been, another bombshell comes out. It's like living in a freaking DJ Khaled song. Another one. The latest ridiculous news item comes from the outstanding Howard Stutz of the Nevada Independent who noticed that the A's non-relocation agreement with Las Vegas includes a clause that allows the team to play eight games away from their proposed Sin City Stadium annually. This of course is problematic for any number of reasons. Let's pluck one out of the air, shall we? Pfft, here we go. Oh, that's right, the financial presentation the Oakland Athletics made to the Nevada State Senate insisted the team would sell out every single home game in Las Vegas, all 81 of them, with 30% of those in attendance being out-of-towners, of course. That is how the stadium would be a success in the view of those hired by the Athletics to champion its cause. And all of those projections were made playing a full slate of 81 home games there a year. A non-relocation agreement allowing the Athletics to play up to 10% of their home games away from home annually is just so ridiculous. Quite frankly, I guess you could say one way or the other, Dave Cavill and John Fisher are... enough there's actually a bit of precedent when it comes to a team moving or relocating to a new city and then playing a bunch of neutral site games in fact the precedent comes from another bay area franchise what happens when you move an nba franchise out west but don't have a place to play you just show up wherever whenever even sacramento high school the Golden State Warriors are cruising California. That video coming up later this month on the touchback and don't worry, stupid trailer not included. Anyway, back to the here and now, the A's proposed relocation to Las Vegas. Well, there are a few differences between their scenario and what the San Francisco Warriors faced way back in the day. Namely, no one really cared about the NBA in the 1960s, and those Warriors did not have a true home arena, I guess you could say. Not only do the Athletics play in a billion dollar league, huge revenues, huge visibility, all of that, but they're moving into a brand new ballpark built specifically for them. They aren't schlepping around between War Memorial Gymnasium, the Cow Palace, the Civic Center, and just about everywhere else in Northern California. Dave Cavill, as he is wont to do, gave some truly confusing and half-assed responses when this issue was brought up to him. The question here remains the same. Why do the A's need the flexibility, the ability to play so many of their home games away from their proposed new hometown? When you look at what is happening with the A's and this desire to play up to 10% of their games outside of Las Vegas, I think one of three scenarios seems to be playing out. The first scenario is that ownership and those running the franchise have a desire to play a bunch of games overseas. I don't know what markets they're thinking of, probably Latin America, as that would be the easiest, Mexico City, Monterey, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic. I, I don't know where exactly these plans are focused on, but this would be a potential scenario here. We do know MLB continues to look at ways to take games abroad. We started this year with the Soul Series. There's going to be London previously, Sydney, Tokyo. There's been quite a few in some of the Latin American markets mentioned previously. Could the A's be used as a, I guess, a guinea pig for lack of a better term to maybe establish a secondary home in one of these markets? It's not outside the realm of possibility. It would also be in line with what Cavill said about expanding the brand. Domestically, there ain't a whole lot of places for the A's to play that would be better than a new ballpark in Las Vegas. Seriously, are they just gonna go to play in a triple A park? When they're not playing in Vegas, that doesn't make any sense. It would have to be overseas in a market they could establish and potentially cultivate. Now, given that those running the franchise haven't been able to do that in Las Vegas yet, the belief that they could not only build up the fan base in Vegas, who seems at best tepid to their arrival, while creating bonds and a lasting sort of commitment to a secondary market, I Good luck with that. These folks just don't seem to have the wherewithal, the capability to do such a thing overseas, but it would make sense given their desire to now have the flexibility to play eight games a year outside of Las Vegas. Those would be lined up somewhere in the world where I don't know. 
The second scenario possibly playing out, and the one I believe to be most likely, is that we are seeing the other shoe now drop in Sacramento. Everyone wondered, what was Sacramento getting out of this arrangement between Vivek Ranadive and John Fisher? It didn't seem to make a hell of a lot of sense for them to do this. Now, I know Ranadive has said, well, we're going to be first in line for an expansion team, but we know that's not true. Manfred has never said anything of the source. We know Nashville and Utah seem to be 1A and 1B as it comes to expansion in Major League Baseball. So what the agreement between the A's and Sacramento may have included that no one has been privy of is that the A's will continue playing games in the capital of California even after they go to Las Vegas. And that would explain why the, the A's leadership wants that flexibility to play games outside of Las Vegas. That could also contribute to a secondary reason. Are the A's looking to backdoor their way into somehow keeping a slice of that Northern California market? If the team says, well, we're still playing eight games a year in Sacramento, maybe we can somehow keep that NBC California contract going, obviously at a much less rate of cost, but it could be just a way for them to somehow keep visibility there, keep that alive. Now, I, I don't think Major League Baseball would ever allow it. I think the Giants would raise a huge hissy fit if the A's somehow continue to be broadcast in Northern California while playing in Las Vegas. We do know, though, that A's ownership, A's leadership doesn't necessarily think things through. Someone probably just floated this idea out randomly, and they're just running with it to see if someone stops them or not. Returning to the idea of still playing games in Sacramento even after that Las Vegas stadium is open, it would be an interesting concession that Vivek Ranadive did get from John Fisher, and we've all been waiting to figure out, like, what is in it for the Kings owner? If it is getting those games in 2029, 2030, however long that agreement may be, it does make their whole sort of arrangement over the next three seasons a little more... I don't know what I want to say here, uh, reasonable, I suppose, as opposed to just letting his quote unquote friend John Fisher play in Sacramento for three years rent free. If he does continue to get MLB games beyond those three seasons, you would sort of see, OK, that's what he was doing, I guess. I still hate the idea. I still think it's the dumbest thing ever, but at least Ranadive has finally gotten something from Fisher for this. It would also help justify all of the renovations, all of the improvements that are needed to be made at Sutter Health Park as well. Now, I'm not saying this is what happened, but when you read the tea leaves, when you look at the situation, it does make a lot of sense on the surface. The third scenario is that the A's are simply pivoting away from Las Vegas. Look, we know there is no one able to self-sabotage a stadium plan in this world quite like A's owner John Fisher. Is he simply leaning into his power of passive aggressiveness and inaction to go somewhere else outside of Las Vegas? In this case, most likely Utah. It certainly can't be discredited. We saw how he just sort of him and haw and drug his feet over all of the various plans in Oakland. It seems, quite frankly, very similar to what's happening in Las Vegas right now. Still no stadium financing plan, some really questionable renders. Who knows what Bally's is doing on that site? It's just a complete mess. Meanwhile, Utah's out here flashing $900 million for a new potential MLB stadium in Salt Lake City. There could be no doubt Fisher is not at least having a bit of buyer's remorse for rushing so quickly into Las Vegas and plans that have been fraught from the start. You would hope someone in the MLB offices would have a red line that would just stop Fisher from going up and down the Pacific and mountain time zones, just salting the earth in search of a new stadium. That though doesn't seem to be the case. So would he be allowed to, instead of going to Las Vegas, divert over to Utah? We can't say no, given everything MLB's already allowed Fisher to get away with in the past year and change. We also know Utah seems to be perfectly fine welcoming in the dredges of a league. If they were willing to bring in the poorly run Arizona Coyotes into their market, I assume they would welcome the A's. Although, I don't know if they're going to be keen on John Fisher, and I don't know if Fisher is going to be keen to sell, which makes this a little less likely than the other two scenarios I've mentioned previously. Still, though, something to watch out for. There are two final thoughts I want to leave you with. Firstly, I don't find this particularly surprising. Everyone knows the Oakland Athletics and John Fisher are the shadiest franchise in all of professional sports. The only franchise 
incapable of doing even the most basic things. And even remotely competent ownership and leadership group would have been able to get this thing in Las Vegas over the line and done by now. There's been more than enough time to dot all the I's, cross all the T's, and have a stadium plan in place, to have a developed plan in place, to not need to play eight games a year outside of your new home stadium. Alas, John Fisher and Dave Cavill have proven once again to not even be remotely competent. Second, how absolutely stupid do those Nevada state senators look right now for rushing through that financial assistance package for the athletics without doing any due diligence? These are things that should have been worked out before approving $380 million worth of financing for a new stadium. A new stadium, by the way, that is no closer to construction now than it was when the financial assistance was first approved. But hey, what do I know? Maybe Las Vegas will be delighted to share their team with Sacramento. I'm sure they're going to be happy to spend all of that taxpayer money on a new stadium for a team playing 10% of its games somewhere else. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to learn more about how I believe a scenario in which Oakland and Sacramento share these, video upper right hand corner of your screen, and to get a better idea of why those Las Vegas stadium renderings the A's presented don't make a heck of a lot of sense, video lower right hand corner of your screen. Until next time, I am Shine Hollis. This is the Touchback, and as always, hashtag take it out to the 25.